Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. The filmmaker Werner Herzog met and became friends with a man named Bruce Chapman. Chapman is known as a brilliant travel author and world novad, a self-described storyteller. And in his autobiography, Herzog writes of their relationship and how close they became as they both enjoyed walking together in the mountains. The relationship, he tells us, on the last day in which Herzog had come to Chatwin's deathbed to show him the documentary about his life. On seeing Herzog, Chatwin said, almost coming alive, I need to get out there. I need to go walking with you. We need to go walking. And then Chatwin raised his body difficultly looked upon his own diminished bone, thin legs, and laid back with a sigh upon his pillow and said, Werner, I can no longer carry my rucksack. You will have to carry it for me. And Herzog replied, Yes, I know. I will carry it. Today, we celebrate and remember the life of Sylvia, but we also remember and celebrate God's resurrection gift, God's peace, a peace beyond all understanding which now envelops Sylvia. We imagine her perhaps in a beautiful place, Maybe she walks through tall green grass in heaven, hands outstretched with tips of green passing across her palms and brilliant sunlight all around her. Her public life was indeed well lived, many a good work done friends and memories abundant. And like all of us, her private sins and brokenness have now all been washed away by God's heavenly light. If you know scripture well, perhaps this is the potter with his clay or the refiner's fire or some brilliant blast from Daniel's furnace that cleanses and makes whole. Like Chatwin, Sylvia can no longer carry her backpack, her rucksack. She no longer needs it. And while she will be with us in new ways, always until the end of our own journeys, she has not asked any of us to carry it for her. That is not our work. We, you and I, remain here amidst the myriad roads and paths that we have walked and those that still wait the imprint of our feet. Fields to cross, mountains to climb, courses to ford, and gulfs to navigate. And so we continue our pilgrimage with God and with one another here on this earth for a while longer. And as we go, we fill our own rucksacks, at first with stories for the journey. Sometimes I think we fill them with scary stories from which we can learn no longer to be afraid. 
we learn that it is important in those kinds of stories to protect other people. And they remind us that we can survive anything that comes at us. And we take food to eat, comfort food like the cookies that come after this service, but they are not fuel. They hide. They are food for the hunger inside of us that waits, not for the things of this world, but for the things of heaven. We take water to drink, and as we go day after day, year after year, making our walk, we naturally load our rucksacks with too much stuff. If you are a hiker, a golfer, or anyone actually, we all carry a bag. Jesus reminds us of this when he says, take up your cross. We already have it, and we are lugging it around with us. And if you opened your rucksack after all these years, I guarantee you would find a piece of webbing or a lanyard long ago used to hold your life together that now is stuck to the bottom of an unused, now melted cliff bar. And some of you have golf bags. Golf bags are the worst because they include a thousand tees that for some reason you golfers keep buying, thinking that eventually you'll use them. Balls, not just the balls that you bought, but all those that you found on the course and thought might be better and your game would be better if you carried them with you. And how many golf markers, golf ball markers do you have with banks you never even bank with in there? Oh, we can giggle at the hikers and the golfers. But if you have a briefcase or a bag, a purse, you know there's a receipt in there from a lunch with a friend, maybe a friend even who consoled you, but it is now adhered very well in place to a sticky cough drop or lipstick. You see, we carry with us the memories of Sylvia. We do. We find in there, in those packs, memories of love and of joy But they're also filled with a little bit of pain, some suffering, and maybe even some grief as we gather today, because that's the way any life is lived. And some lives have a little more than others. Every once in a while, after miles walked, we come to a moment and a time, and you know what? We should empty all those bags out. And we should clean them, scrub them down. Because sometimes you don't need the same things anymore. You're moving along a life and a journey. And sometimes the things that you brought with us are, are not what you need today. So perhaps we pack a different set of narratives. The ones that comfort in darkness of life. The ones that tell about victories. The ones how we survive the cold, the dark, and the dangers. Perhaps we pack food that sustains, that's actually fuel, that isn't weighed down with sweetness and fades too quickly for what our body needs, but instead perhaps we pack, as the scripture says, wine for drinking and bread for eating. Perhaps we fill our bottles not just with smart water, but living water from a well that never will end. All life here is but a shadow of the life to come, you see. No matter how good. It's only an image of the greater life that awaits us. The sacredness of our journey here is a pilgrimage made with the bright light of God's Son. The one who shines upon Sylvia now. The light that has wiped away tears and ended pain and cast down the demons and nip at heels. The light that has trampled down death as Sylvia is welcomed into the light and life of greener pastures. So we may invite the light into our valleys today. And we may in turn reflect that light to others as they need it. 
Let us measure the depth of our debt to God and for his life and this life's journey. For the life in the fields of the Lord to come, let us feel the warmth of the blaze of God and be astonished at the very being, not just of Sylvia, but of each one of us. Let us walk, let us wander, our rucksacks lightened maybe a little bit today, by the God who loves us and has decided to carry it for us for a while. And in our wanderings, discover the sunrise of God that makes our faces turn red. For in this life, we can in a moment discover in our living just for an instance we can experience sometimes what Sylvia now will have for the rest of eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.